if you grew up somewhere, you don't really know any difference, so that's just your reality. But I always felt so separate. I always felt like I was in one bubble and then everyone else was in another bubble. And I remember when I was a child, I was like so incredibly sensitive as well. I was like, I was so sensitive to everything, like whether someone was in a bad mood or if someone looked at me funny. And I was the only mixed race girl in the whole of my school, and then in the whole of my secondary school, and then at my dance school. So sometimes, obviously, like I just felt just really, I don't know, even if people were being nice to me, I just felt really separate because I. Sometimes I felt like I had no point of reference and even the music that I listened to at home or the food that me and my family ate or the way that I wanted to dance or dress, it always just felt completely alien to what everyone else wanted to do. And I remember my dad giving my friend a lift home from school and um, the next day, my friend was like, why does your dad always listen to jazz music? It's so sad. And I was just like, oh. And I remember saying to my dad, I was like, next time she comes in the car, like, can you just put the radio on? You know, I was so, like, conscious. And then, I don't know, I just got over that and was just like, it is what it is. And I think, you know, feeling feeling separate and feeling like you're in your own bubble, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I was doing a choreography competition and a lot of the other like young dancers that were my friends they would you know dress up as Minnie Mouse and like do a dance about going to Disneyland or you know dress up as Snow White and eat the poison apple and then fall on the floor and I was like Ugh, I don't know I don't want to be a Disney character and I just heard that song, it was by Marvin Gaye, Calypso Blues, and it just had these drums and at the beginning, like he was doing this wailing, and I found it really emotive, like even as such like a young girl, I was just really fascinated by it. And my mum used to make costumes for me, and I was like, mum, like, make me a slave outfit. And someone was like, out of what? And I was like, I want to wear like grey fabric, and I want it to be torn up, and I want to wrap my head up like in a sort of African sort of scarf and I want to the whole dance has got to be about like shackles and how heavy the shackles are and I've got to like r sort of rub my wrists along the floor and everything's got to be so low and like if I lift up my arms it's got to be so heavy and the whole dance has got to be about being tired and then I started I think I'd seen something on television about capo capoeira I can't say it capoeira there you go um, which is a style of dance which originated from the slave times and it was basically the slaves weren't allowed to fight and if they started fighting with each other they'd get punished. So they made up a dance, it was like fighting and got out all their aggression so they'd sort of kick around each other and sort of go to hit each other but then like miss and like usually two men would do it together and weave and they'd like have their legs going up in the air and stuff and I was like that looks so cool so I made the choreography around this type of slave dance and then I performed it at a really middle class white music festival and dance festival and everyone was just like whoa, <laughs> that's really intense. <laughs> and uh, I don't know whether the other parents were really down, but my mum was supportive and my mum helped me like cut the music and, and make the costume and stuff like that. We've got a really amazing live setup that, um, well, it's very simple, but I'm, I'm always very amazed at um, how the, the guys in my band pull it together so well. But it's basically just SPDs um, we don't run a click track or anything like that. It's very easy when it's sort of um, that more electronic music. A lot of people can have drums with like a click and it's half running off a backing track. But from the beginning, Tick and I were just like, no backing tracks, no clicking, no like weird headphones or anything on stage, no laptop glow. You know, like, you can just see like the Mac in the back like glowing like an angel, like nothing like that. It's just all of the sounds separated onto different patches and different um, diff on the different SPD pads. So the guys play each thing, but it's not like if there's a boom cat, it's not like one person will be going the boom and then the cat and then the boom and then the cat. It will be boom and then that person will be doing the cat 
And if it's like hi hats, it'll be like t -t 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 -t, and then the other person's carrying it on. So it's quite like confusing to watch. We basically tried to make it as difficult as we as we possibly could in terms of um, the rhythm, just to try and sort of. I guess just get across how the percussion in my songs like weaves in and out and slows down and gets faster.